Wallera Wang is a small township in the central tablelands of New South Wales, about 14 kilometres northwest of Lithgow. Known for its now closed thermal coal power station, it is home to around 2,000 residents. Unfortunately, those 2,000 residents don't have the use of the town's railway station, which has sat disused and abandoned since 1989, when state rail collapsed many rail services to the west. Wallera Wang, as well as other railway stations in the area, became redundant once rail was replaced with coach services. The station was opened in 1870 during the growth of the railways to the west. Wallera Wang became a major junction and yard, as it's where the main western line meets the Guabega line. Originally, the station was named Mudgee Road, but by 1873 it was changed to Wallera Wang, which is the Wiradjuri Aboriginal name for place near wood and water. In December of 2002, Wallera Wang Station and Yard Group was granted heritage listing, being described as having rare and uncommon aspects of cultural and historical significance. The station complex consists of many interesting structures which we'll take a look at in detail shortly. From above we can see the water column and station master's residence and main station building from 1870, as well as Platform 2's timber waiting shed from 1913. West of the main buildings is the pedestrian bridge and one of two 1915 signal boxes on Platform 2. Dominating Platform 1 is the extended awning from 1883 which has an unusual design. Further west at the top of your screen we can see the 1882 goods shed and jib crane. All in all a very interesting site. Let's check out each of these buildings in detail. Starting at the eastern end of the station area is the 15,000 gallon water tank and pump shed dating back to the early 20th century. The tank hasn't serviced the area since the demise of steam and now only holds water from the recent rains. The galvanised iron shed that houses the seized pumps overlooks the station site and the water column that it once fed. Now just a reminder of an era when Wallera Wang was a busy hive of industry and activity. At the most eastern end of the platform is the 1870 Station Master's residence that was once home to one of the community's most important people. Now empty, except for some random furniture and the soot that's left in the fireplace. Next to the station master's residence is the two-storey main station building. Opened on the 1st of March in 1870, the station and its sandstone block constructed building served as the terminus to the main western line until the 1st of July in 1870 when the line was extended to Rydal. Platform number one has a stone and brick construction with a tar top which is now covered in lichen from years of non-use and cleaning. The main station building still displays many of its original design elements including the wooden awning and the enamel signs that show its importance in the growth of the railways west, being an important junction station. The station building has been used in recent years rented out to a cafe, but now sits empty, awaiting its unknown future. Sitting across from the main building on Platform 1, sits Platform 2 and the wooden waiting shed, built in 1913. Now sitting boarded up, the waiting shed is very typical of the turn of the 20th century. The number 2 platform, also constructed in 1913 for the duplication of the Western Line, is made from brick and soil construction, now covered in overgrown grasses. Slightly west of the two station buildings is the pedestrian bridge, 
which joins both sides of the rail corridor and platforms 1 and 2. The pedestrian bridge has a steel and wood construction and is still a very important part of the Walerawang community as it still links the residents on the southern side of the station with the shops and transport on the northern side. The main part of the bridge is still very sturdy but the stairs down to each platform are cordoned off as the timber in parts is unsafe. Dominating Platform 1 are the freestanding and attached bespoke wooden awnings from 1883. The awnings have an intricate and unusual design. Some areas of the awning are showing signs of vandalism and water damage, but are in still good condition considering the 140 years they have sheltered passengers from the rain and hot Australian sun. Walking Platform 1 between the wooden supports of the awning, one can't help but imagine the sights and sounds that these structures have seen in the last 140 years. At the eastern end of Platform 2 is the elevated East Signal Box, which serviced Wellerawang Yard from 1915 until automation in the early 1990s. The East Box is made from brick and fibro, and has an elevated vantage point for looking over the now gone yard. Access to the control room is now impossible as the stairs leading up have been removed. But let's take a look inside the lower levels. On entry into the signal box we can see the level of water damage from the weather that has made its way in, as well as the pigeons that now use the signal levers as places to roost and nest. The floor is strewn with pigeon poo and debris from above, as well as track possession books from the state rail era of the 1990s. Vandals have also made their way in and stolen copper wire and line from inside the signal rooms. As we move further west, away from the main station, we come to the wooden and corrugated iron goods shed built in 1882. The goods shed provided an important link to industry and the residents of Wallerawang, now providing nesting space to the local pigeons, who really weren't happy being disturbed by my drone. Next to the goods shed is the jib crane, also built in 1882. The crane sits alone on its own concrete plinth, now a rusting reminder of its importance at one time. Finally, sitting at the junction point sits the West Signal Box, sitting as part of Wellerawang's rail history and part of the great Wellerawang Pigeon Loft Tour of 2024. Wallerawang Rail Group is full of history and shows the importance of the railways in the area. What is ahead for Wallerawang? There is talk of reinstating the station and tenders have gone out for the refurbishment of Many of the residents that I have spoken to have fond memories of catching the train from here and hope that they will soon have an active station again. While exploring this historical site, I was constantly reminded that history is all around us if we only take a moment to look. Until next time. What, what lurks, lurks in your, in your abandoned spaces? spaces.